through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 179. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Paranorman, yeah. we're talking stop motion animation. Uh, something that I love. Oh yeah, same here. Ever since the old days of California Raisins. But you know, it's one of those things that, to look back on, I actually looked at sort of a list of mm -hmm. uh, stop motion animation through same the years. Here. And a lot of it really didn't pick up until like the early 90s, late 80s. Or I it mean, was shorts. Or it was shorts, or it was holiday themed. Yes. And a lot mm -hmm. of that stuff I haven't seen. Yeah. I don't know if it's ever been rebroadcast. Yeah. But, you know, exactly. it exists. One such example, which I have seen and I do love, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Who doesn't love Rudolph yeah. the Red Nosed Reindeer? Obviously, we're talking about the TV mm -hmm. movie here. Yep. Only 47 minutes, I believe, but I, I think it's one of the cutest things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's pretty iconic in the kind of happy, sparkly American version of Christmas, or just cr version of Christmas in general. It's, I mean, it's also one of those things that really, I don't know, I mean, this was 64, this was probably probably around the time of Rocky and Bowenkel, right? Mm, probably. Um, so the idea of like changing a mm. classic story yeah. is Probably a fairly Fractured new, fairy tales. yeah. You know, it's probably a fairly new mm, concept, mm -hmm. and they they sort of took that sort of rhyme about Rudolph the Red Nosed yes. Reindeer and made a story mm -hmm. about it. And, then, and I think what most people remember about the Rudolph Red Nosed story is not from the rhyme; it's from this movie. Yeah, I know. With me, there's a lot of stuff that I thought was in the original rhyme that I later realized was just from this that I had picked yeah. up on. No, totally. And you mean it's sort of like you think it was was it a uh, Hermie mm -hmm. the elf. Yeah, like that whole that, character. That whole character mm -hmm. never mentioned in mm -hmm. any capacity in yeah, the rhyme. I think that's and, the one I'm thinking of. And I mean, he is such an endearing character, oh, I know. and his relationship and friendship with Rudolph is so sweet that you know I I just love mm -hmm. I love the movie. Like, yeah. I think I think it's amazing. The the animation was very good for yeah. being in 1964. Good, good moral story yeah. that uh, teach kids and know, not to pick on those who are different. Amusingly enough, I don't know if you've ever seen the Mad TV um, <laughs> parody. Yes. Um, was it like Rudolph's Revenge yeah, or something so, like that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the funniest things I've ever seen, and I, I love this movie, but I can take a humor about it. I feel the same way about the Christmas episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, mm. where they went stop motion and mm -hmm. parodied That was it. great, yeah. Anything that parodies th this is so, oh, yeah. And of course, we're talking, you know, this is classic Rink and, and Bass yes, stuff Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. So, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Also, strangely, I wanted to note the director, mm -hmm. Kizo Naga Nagashima. Okay. Didn't direct really anything else. Huh. He worked on Santa Claus is Coming to Town, but that really was all on his filmography. Interesting. This was so awesome. I don't know why nobody was like, why don't we get that dude? Maybe because it was a TV movie, and so the network never let it even know who did it. They kept it all under wraps. Fuck you, networks. That's all I got Because back say. in that day, you know, yeah. they wouldn't necessarily yeah. be like, oh, this amazing TV director. Totally. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're going to have to jump forward yeah, many, many years because there's a lot of stuff we never saw, mm -hmm. never really became majorly or famous. It's just like, you know, the... the the evolution of the medium is right. changing yeah. and growing older. But the the point at which I think it really started to explode was the late early's and especially in the early nineties with the mm -hmm. release of Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. Or the Nightmare Before yes. Christmas. This is the Tim Burton inspired creation from director Henry Selleck, mm -hmm. which is a name you should begin to recognize because we're going to mention it mm -hmm. a, bunch a bunch more, more during the second. Because yeah. the dude is kind of the shit when yeah. it comes to stop motion He's kind animation. of the guy. <laughs> he, he's great. And it's one of those things, Nightmare Before Christmas, amazing story about, you know, uh, a skeleton from, you know, yeah, a world Halloween where all, town. The, all the holidays have their own world. Yeah, and he goes from Halloween Town, finds Christmas Town, mm -hmm. and changes his whole perspective yep. about the world. He tries and to bring Christmas to Halloween Town. Great idea. I'll give Tim Burton all the credit mm -hmm. in the world for that. But in terms of execution, Henry Selleck gets no credit. Everyone I, just I says Tim Burton, Tim Burton, I think Tim that's Burton. been changing lately in the later years as Tim Burton has done less and less successful things. Mm. And Henry Selleck has done more and more successful things. I hope and you're right. Because I start to hear that a lot more than I used to back when, in the 90s, when this, no one really ever talked about it being anything other than Tim Burton. Yeah. And it should note, we should note that, you know, we're saying this is sort of the rise of mm -hmm. stop motion animation. Check this little nugget out. The film was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Wow. That's kind of awesome. 
Do you know what won the war that year? Oh, 93? No, I don't. Fucking Jurassic Park. Whoa! Jurassic Park <laughs> beat out The Nightmare Before Christmas for visual effects. I can see that. I'm I can, sorry. I can see that. But, but what a competition. Well, exactly. Like How awesome would it be to be in the fucking conversation yeah. with Jurassic Park for best for, visual effects? Yeah. Jurassic Park changed visual yeah. effects. Like, Still. CGI <laughs> rose with Jurassic yeah, Park. Definitely. Like, it's, it's insanity. The, the, nobody the, had ever seen the people running along looking at the green tennis balls before Jurassic Park. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's insanity to yeah. think that Night, the Nightmare Before Christmas was even in that conversation. The thing that always gets me about this movie that always still surprises me to this day, not the fact that Danny Elfman did the music, but that Danny Elfman wrote and sang all of Jack Skellington. That doesn't get me because I like me some Oingo Boingo. Okay, fair enough. Fair and enough. And if, if anyone seen like, you know, uh, was it um, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield? Uh-huh. Not only do you get some Oingo Boingo in that movie, but you also get um, Danny Elfman in uh, the movie that's right. as part of Oingo Boingo when they're performing. <laughs> and not only that, but they fucking wrote the theme to Weird Science. How dope is that shit? It's pretty dope. Danny Elfman, yeah, super talented guy. Bring Oingo Boingo super back. Pimp. I would buy that CD. <laughs> New wave, it's coming back. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we mentioned, you know, Henry Sella mm-hmm. for a little film called The Nightmare Before Christmas. Perhaps you know him from another film a few years later mm-hmm. called James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, he directed that shit as well. Uh huh. You of know, my, another one of my favorites. Also, should know. I think Roald Dahl. This, right? Roald Dahl. Yes. Yep. I think we should note that I think this was the first time they had live action and uh, claymation mm. in a movie together. Interesting. Because they as like a feature. Yeah, they tail end both yeah, the beginning right. and end with live action mm-hmm. stuff because you and know have James a, kid. Um, the Ab Fab, the ladies from Absolutely Fabulous, yes. are the two ants. Yes, and you know, I was it a uh, Ant Spiker and Ant Sponge. Mm-hmm. You know, and a great group of people mm-hmm. in this cast. You know, you're... something about that uh, that bi- that bookend also gives the animation so much more of a magical feeling than just mm-hmm. the whole movie being an animation like that. Yeah, totally. I I mean, this is a story of, you know, an orphan who basically goes and lives in a giant Mm -hmm. peach (laughs) along with a group of insects. Yes. Like, it is an absolutely bonkers concept. Because they grow with the peach, so they're all human-sized. Yeah. It's like a bonkers concept. But Roald Dahl Dahl. Dahl is a really (laughs) kooky dude, Uh and I would argue that this is one of the best Roald Dahl Mm. adaptations. You know, like, a lot of people like the witches. I don't get that shit. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't like the witches a lot. Um, I like... The original Willy Wonka, but mm-hmm. that's not really so much him. Yeah, it's not much of but an But other than that, you know, like, Mo- Miss Fantastic Mr. Fox and this are probably the best yeah. examples of mm-hmm. Roald Dahl's work. And yeah. I love Roald Dahl as a kid. I was so into Roald Dahl's books as a kid. I actually read all of them. Mm. Me, Look at you. read. He read. Yeah, I know. That <laughs> should guy. speak. Yeah. That should say how much I enjoyed him. I went to the trouble to hunt them all out. Nice. It took me years. Pre-Google. It took me years. Yeah, pre-Google. I actually had to go to bookstores. It was fucking nuts. Pre-Amazon. <laughs> was like, what are these places? Yeah, it was nuts. It was nuts. <laughs> Where do I swipe my card? Yeah, it was nuts. Funny thing about this also, mm-hmm. got an Oscar nomination for music. Apparently, Randy Newman did the music. I don't remember that, but that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I can see that. But this, the, is, the, 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 this is quite a voice. Uh, heavy, I mean, great voice of Jane Leaves, uh, Pete Postlewaite, mm, Susan Sarandon. Peace, you know, so many good people, yeah. Pour one out for him. Yeah. Um, but, you know, great, great, mm-hmm. great film. So fun. Yeah. Continue on the trend. One of them that we're going to sort of do a now and then kind of thing yeah. with, mm-hmm. uh, because it predates. Yes. Nightmare Before Christmas mm-hmm. in terms of the short films, yes. and that is Wallace, Wallace and Gromit. Gromit. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Wallace and Gromit: Curse of the Were Rabbit, which came out in 2005. The, but we yeah, should know full feature, the full big feature blockbuster. But we should note that they were doing mm-hmm. stop motion animation, trousers, laid out, or the wrong was. trousers, yeah, a right. grand day out, and a close shave. Those three films I saw when I was in middle school mm-hmm. and absolutely fell in love with. I remember particularly see- the wrong trousers. Yeah. Search that shit out. At, like, I think it's on fe- young animation film festivals. When I mean, I was really young. I know they have it at Scarecrow. I mm-hmm. think it's on Netflix streaming. Search that shit out if you haven't seen it. It is so cute, mm-hmm. so clever, so funny, mm-hmm. all at the same time. Yeah, that it's it's amazing. It's really endearing. You and just really get, fall in love with the characters. Everybody does. It's, and you uh, have to give a lot of credit. You know, Henry Selk, incredibly uh-huh. influential in terms of stop motion animation. You also have to give a lot of credit to Nick Park, mm-hmm. who was sort of one Ardman of the animation. Yeah, Ardman animation. He was invention influential in the creation of Wallace and Gromit, mm-hmm. as well as Creature Comforts, which I believe was pre, oh, yeah, yeah. pre Nightmare Before Christmas as well, mm-hmm. which is that little TV show with the yeah. animals in the zoo I remember talking. Well, yeah. So funny. Mm-hmm. That's so great. And it was just, it's amazing to think about. And those um, were actually still done with clay, which was stop 
you know, a lot of things like Nightmare Before Christmas was, I think, ceramics, and I don't think James the Giant Peach was Peach was clay. People were getting away from clay. Yeah. But Walson Gromit Urban Animation has always been clay, and it really kind of has that older feel. It's, it has I that mean, different look because they, it's clay still. Besides, like probably Pixar mm -hmm. and um, DreamWorks Animation, mm -hmm. they are probably one of the most prolific animation studios i mean I would, they, I would they've been consistently i mean chicken run mm -hmm. flushed away uh wallace and gromit mm -hmm. you know all sorts of stuff has been coming out there they just did the pirates man yeah that's, that's right it's yeah. like they are putting out tons and tons mm -hmm. of loved con beloved yeah. content so you know great on them for that and want to know Kurt wallace and gromit curse the were rabbit immensely cute story mm -hmm. about, really funny you know uh was it a a were rabbit that yes. sort of overtaken the town and mm -hmm. wallace and gromit this old man and this dog who yeah. don't speak <laughs> yeah. who's sort of the watcher of the mm -hmm. old man are the only ones who can sort of save the day because there's and, like a gardening festival yes. going on in this where rabbits yes. eating everybody's yes. prize card totally i yeah. mean super kid friendly mm -hmm. but also one of those films that work for adults as well much yeah, like yeah. pixar and gotta give a lot of credit though it won best uh animated feature of the year wow yeah beat wow. out corpse ride Fuck you on that good. one, Tim Burton. Yeah. Suck on that. Yeah, that movie was um, not good. It was, it was okay, but you know... It was just basically like, remember, remember Nightmare Before Christmas? Totally. Remember how uh, I didn't direct it? Watch what happens when I do. Totally. Oh, totally. But here's one that you might have a problem hmm. with. Uh -oh. It beat out Howl's Moving Castle. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It's still, I mean, it's pretty awesome. I, like I would have Walsh to look. I would have to look back and see if Walsh and Gromit had received any awards yet. Because if they hadn't, I would have to say, yeah, they definitely deserve it. I don't it think they for, had because this is the first feature. Then I would did. say that they deserve that. Because yeah. Miyazaki's done other stuff. Yeah. Hell's Movie Castle is good. Don't get me wrong, but there's other stuff that has one, like Spirited Away. And is, it's not. I mean, Curse of the Were Rabbit's a good film. Oh so yeah. It's not like oh, yeah. it's just like oh we're throwing you a bone. No, for this. Like, no it's, it's not like an after the fact. Sort no, of it's thing. definitely like a f exactly well what you deserved. would have expect yeah. a full feature of Wallace and Gromit to be. Yeah, and it's good to see you know I mean I guess they probably dodged a bullet with Pixar <laughs> that year, um, but it's good to see them rewarded mm -hmm. at Hardman Studios for definitely. all their hard work. So mm -hmm. you know, well deserved. One that you wanted to bring mm. up from a couple years ago. Yes, Mary and Max. Yes, this is. Why don't you describe? Have this you one? seen this? I have not seen okay. this one. Okay. It is, if I remember correctly, it is based on, like, actual things that happen. So it's loosely, like, based mm. on a true story. And what it is is there was a autistic gentleman living in, in New York, like an older autistic man when autism was not known yet and diagnosed, who starts up a, a letter correspondence with, like, an eight, seven- or eight-year-old eight girl, girl yeah. in Australia who literally wants a pen pal because she's so lonely and mm. go, f goes to a phone book finds a phone book and flips through it and just randomly picks a name and starts writing letters to this person. And because he's autistic, rather than being like, what are you doing, little girl? I don't know you. He starts to respond. And the whole movie is animated and both, as it transitions between the two characters, the animation and color are completely different. Mm, interesting. So Ma Max's world is all black and white. That's cool. With really small bursts of color because he's autistic, and when things get crazy for him, things get colorful. Mm. But it's black and white, and he lives in New York. It's very drab. She lives in Australia. It's very brown, soft colors. Like it's really, That's really. Cool. That's neat. sort of like traffic or something. You mm -hmm. know, where the different storylines. Yeah, to think of. and it's clay looking as well, so That's it has awesome. the Ardman look. It's really moving and touching. I believe still on Netflix Instant, which it, is where I saw it. It's very cool in a lot of ways because you know, number one, Adam Elliott, the writer director production designer mm -hmm. um really before this had just done short work so it's really cool, cool that he got the uh, opportunity mm -hmm. to do it, this big feature film mm -hmm. um not big but feature film yeah. but also in addition to that it's got a lot of voice talent in mm. it number one you got like tony collette mm -hmm. who plays mary mm -hmm. the child mm -hmm. you have philip seymour hoffman as max whoa i don't think i knew that yeah that's Isn't that crazy? crazy you also have eric banna in it as a supporting character like wow that's pretty awesome yeah, it, Philip Seymour Hoffman is amazing in this. Then yeah. because man, it's it's really really good. It's I will warn you that it's not as much kid friendly as much as it can be sign, kind of sad, but it's still very good. And you know, it won a, a special award at the Berlin Film Festival. So good on you for that. That's good. a respectable film festival. I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't get nominated for any Academy Awards or anything, but even still, that's yeah, that's a solid solid yeah, it's win. It's really for worthwhile. So I will I will be adding that to you my should. instant watcher Thank you. from. Scarecrow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So rent it here. Yeah. Uh, briefly mentioned it before, mm -hmm. but you know, it's my favorite Wes Anderson mm -hmm. movie. Spoken so. about it many times. Yeah, spoken about it many times. We Fantastic have. Mr. Fox. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about, you know, 
it being the best Roald Dahl mm -hmm. novel or Talked about adaptation, it possibly. George Clooney. Great George Clooney. You know, it's it's so many things, and yet the thing that I don't think it we've really talked about all is the claymation aspect mm, of it. Mm -hmm. It's a great animated mm -hmm. film. Like the story and all that's great, but the the playful nature in which they mm -hmm. do the claymation is so wonderful like the giant tree that they move into mm -hmm. and live in the different farms that are so sort of there's, different and interesting there's something about when you're anthropomorphizing animals or just showing animals in general you can texture is so much of an important thing to differentiate between animal species that we don't think about when it's all just humans yeah but and you can get so much more interesting texture out of stop motion type animation when you're zooming in on these things that you're tweaking that it's just neat to see all the different animals looking different and having their different styles and, and it also like i mean this is one of those ones that I, mean, I would have to think back to all the other ones but i felt scale much more in mm. this one than mm -hmm. other ones and like the tree versus mm -hmm. you know the distance the farms yeah. and stuff like that most most stop motion animation films feel much smaller yes. like claustrophobic yes. rooms and stuff saying. like yeah. that okay. whereas that felt like large mm -hmm. like it felt like you were existing in a world gotcha under, I, I there's the underground I world the above ground yeah. world which is very cool i think mm -hmm. that's really neat that they and, did that and that's very wes anderson to have that whole huge set set up and created that you can just move amongst as much freely because it's all established. Yeah. So. And it's sort of interesting in terms of the way they made it. Like, mm -hmm. I believe I'd heard that Wes Anderson was like living in Paris at the time, huh. whereas the production of it was actually in um, England. Interesting. So I, I don't know if he ever even went to like sets hmm. and stuff like that. I, I don't know what's truth versus fiction, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, like I can't argue with results yeah. and the results are fantastic. Yeah. And you know, it got nominated for uh, best animated feature nice lost to up as much as i love uh fantastic <laughs> mr fox yeah. i gotta give the nod to up yeah. Up is just an amazing I, film i mean honestly I, I i i almost feel like you could take the first 30 minutes of up and it could beat most movies yeah totally that's i think just, up was the best picture of the year yeah oh yeah just I mean, still ugh. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm so glad. That's one of the few movies I was really glad I saw 3D because yeah. I had an extra pair of glasses to hide how much I was yeah. crying. It's it's just one of those things though. That, like you know, if I were Wes Anderson, I was like, "Fuck, I lost this award." I'd be like, <laughs> "All right, it's up. I it's can up. accept that." I've you won know? awards and other things before. I've, I can it's accept cool. this. It's fine. It's you cool. know, whatever. Yeah. Again, venturing back to the realm of Henry Selick, oh, though, yeah. one of possibly his best films. Mm -hmm. One of possibly his best films. Yeah. Coraline. Yep. You know, not only is it a great stop motion animation mm -hmm. film, but like you think about 3D, it's one of the best examples oh, yeah, of 3D. Still. Like, and it's based on a Neil, Neil Gaiman book, who's like, I mean, just you cash the money when it comes to. Biggest comic writer. I mean, Alan Moore's probably Pro up there yeah. as well, but you know, yeah, definitely. he's in the conversation. With Sandman and all the others. I mean, Stardust, the movie, recently movie came mm. back uh, with De Niro and everybody else. In it. It's just like, this is one of those projects that's, it's dark though. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, yeah. it's a stop motion animation film that really isn't necessarily a kid oriented mm -hmm. movie. It's, Neil Gaiman usually has a good t dark twist on things. And this is kind of his, which is weird to say dark twist on the story because the story is already twisted, but this is his dark twist on Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. It's yep. much more falling down the rabbit hole into a whole new world, but also more like behind the looking glass, I guess, rather than down totally. the rabbit hole. Totally. I mean, it's just, again, an amazing, amazing film. Mm -hmm. the, the, the the casting of the voices was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Dakota Fanning was fantastic as Coraline. Terry Hatcher as uh, mm -hmm. mo uh, her mother and other mother. Oh, God, um, other so, mother. So, so creepy. disturbing. Like, the other world is so disturbing that it really... It's not a kid-oriented mm -hmm. stop-motion animation animated movie, but yet it's still so mm -hmm. awesome and powerful. And I mean, you know, it's it's neat to see an adult-oriented stop-motion animated. Film. And if you're a fan of the book and you're wondering how well it's a translation of, I can tell you as a fan of the book that it is a great translation. They add a character into the movie, but the character is her friend, and it's just more to serve as you know, it's hard, a lot harder to have internal monologues and internal thoughts in a movie than it is in a book mm -hmm. so by adding a character that you can have that you can turn it into a dialogue you can get all those same things out just by having people converse about it rather than thinking it so by adding that character in they don't really take away anything from the story yeah it just kind of reinforces it it's nominated for best uh animated feature as well so you know deserves it well deserved well deserved again henry selick yeah 
<laughs> amazing, amazing on, dude. Guy. Him and Nick Park deserve so much mm-hmm. more credit than both of them are getting. Yeah. Just, not even just in the world of stop motion animation, just in film well, in general. Yeah, film in general and animation in general. Yeah, like just they deserve more yeah. more talk. Brings us to this Friday, mm-hmm. August seventeenth. Paranorman yeah. coming out. Story of a misunderstood boy who can speak with the dead, mm-hmm. and you know his town not really understanding that. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, he is tasked with. Um, Basically protecting the town from a witch's curse, which has been uh-huh. placed upon there. It's sort of it's, and I've seen this really, really neat film. Like the animation is sort of a little bit more rough mm, than a lot mm-hmm. of stop motion animation, and that's probably done intentionally, which mm-hmm. is cool. Um, very sweet story. Great, great voice talent. Hmm. I mean, you've got uh, what's it, Cody, um, Cody Smith McPhee from The Road and Let Me okay. In, who okay. is, plays Norman. Okay. Uh, you also have. Christopher Mintz plots as okay. sort of a bully mm-hmm. character who kind of has to work with uh, Norman mm-hmm. at one point, mm-hmm. as well as, you know, John Goodman as his uncle, oh, Mr. Right. Pendergast. And, you know, it's just an amazing group. Leslie Mann, mm-hmm. uh, Anna Kendrick, Casey Affleck, just an amazing wow, talent nice. for a smaller sort of scale mm-hmm. stop motion animated film. Um, it's it's great. It's, it's sort of... Uh, a Sixth Sense meets mm. I don't know how to Sixth Sense meets like the Blair Witch Project. Oh, okay. Because you have you have a kid who can see dead characters okay. who has to go up against a witch's curse. I see. And it's 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 neat. It's kid friendly. It might be a little bit dark for some mm. kids, but I still think it works for both kids and adults. Really, really fun film. Your, your screwed up middle kid will probably want to go love see the it. shit out of it. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. And you know, I I I enjoyed it enough that I'm gonna definitely go check it out again. Awesome. And I will I look say, forward to it coming out to where us I, normal normies can see it. I'm trying to remember. I think it was in 3D when I saw it, and I don't remember being blown away by mm. the 3D. But you know, the film. The film itself is great. So awesome. We're checking out. So awesome. Anyway, join us next week as we mm-hmm. do our DVD rundown for the week of August 24th. Mm-hmm. And as always, we're on uh, MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, mm-hmm. uh, phone number 323-761-9842. Send us your feedback. Please. You can find us on iTunes, uh, Miro, Roku, Blip. Checking to get Clue. Send us your hate mail. Yeah. We'll We're see you next time. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.